Last time then, uh, I was just reminding you about some stuff you already knew about d-dimensional space and how that works. So you've got uh, vectors, either written as column vectors or points. Um, and I'm not distinguishing between points and vectors. And quite often we'll just write them out using their sequence of coordinates in the usual way. I pointed out that I'm not so good at writing bold characters, so I'll be underlining my vectors or points in R to the D in this module. Later modules, you may not even bother to underline them because in context you'll be able to recognize whether or not you're dealing with uh, elements of vector spaces or elements of the real or complex numbers. So if you write them as column vectors, they take up a lot of space. And I was just reminding you last time again about the, uh, the inner product that you'll have met at the end of linear mathematics, which is the standard dot product. And from that, you get the norm of a vector, which is basically the same as its length. So you take the inner product of the vector of itself and take the square root. That's the norm of x. Directly, you can just say it's the sum of the squares of the coordinates. You don't even need the modulus signs because, of course, because they're real numbers, you don't really need to say mod xi squared. You could just say xi squared. But if you want the one that works for complex numbers, then you would need the modulus signs, so it's probably safest to keep it in. Real numbers in this module, so you don't have to worry. And then uh, this usual cauchy schwarz inequality says that if you do do the dot product of two things, you get at most the product of the norms, which if you remember from two or three dimensional space, that's because you actually get the product of the norms and then multiplied by the cosine of the angle in between them, uh, which will be between minus one and one. So when you take the modulus, uh, you won't get anything more than uh, one from the cosine. And that's what's going on in two and three dimensions, and it works just as well in higher dimensions as well which enables you to talk about the angle between uh, two vectors in d-dimensional space, even if it's rather hard to visualize once it gets about three dimensions. Now, here are some properties of the norm function, some of which you can actually check for yourself on question sheets, uh, but they were standard last year. I'm not going to go through the proof of them this year. So you can check them for yourself. You can look at last year's notes. You can do a bit of extra work on the question sheets. But I'll be taking this as a standard property of the norm or length of a vector in d-dimensional space in this module. First one is called the triangle inequality. That's that the, if you add two vectors together, the norm of the sum is no more than the sum of the norms. Now, uh, because, let me just draw a triangle for you. If that's the origin, and here's x, and here's x plus y, uh, let's bring that back. Again, I've got too near the edge of the screen. Then uh, to get from zero to x, that's distance norm x. And to get from x to x plus y, that's distance norm y. And then to get from the origin to x plus y, which is the norm of x plus y, but that's no more than the sum of the lengths of the other two sides, and that's why it's called the triangle inequality. And we'll be using that again and again in this module, so make sure you know it. But it just says that the length of the longer side of a triangle is no more than the sum of the lengths of the other two sides. Or indeed, the length of any side of a triangle is no more than the length of the other two sides. Add it together. The second one, uh, so lambda is a scalar here. So this is, um, here we go, we've got, uh, in this proposition, it didn't say, but it should have done, um, this is for 
x and y in r to the d and lambda a scalar, so lambda the real number, that if you multiply a vector by a constant, then you think you might mod multiply the length of the vector by the same constant, except that the constant could be negative. If the constant's negative, of course, you're not going to get a negative length. Making a vector negative preserves the length. So what you want is to multiply by the modulus of lambda instead. So the, uh, the norm of, for example, minus 2 times x is equal to 2 times the norm of x, not minus 2 times the norm of x. And the last one, well, if you're thinking of norm of x as the distance from x to 0, then, of course, the only way you can be distance 0 from the origin is if you're at the origin. So that's what this last one says, uh, that the norm of x is 0 if and only if x is actually at the origin, because that means your distance to the origin is 0. So you're supposed to know this result and be able to apply it, but you don't need to be able to prove it as book work, you could be asked as an exercise to prove some portions of this. And so it could be an unseen part of an exam question, but not a book work part of an exam question. So as I was saying, we're thinking of norm of x as the distance from x to the origin. when you guys are the point. And it's calculated using the usual Pythagoras' rule. which is why you sum the squares and then square root. <coughs> now, with those three properties, that's going to be what you need to know about the Euclidean norm, well, and its formula, of course. And now we've got a notion of distance, Again, this corresponds to the usual notion of distance using Pythagoras' rule. You are going to be summing the squares of the differences of the coordinates. So I'm going to this is the other use of d in this module. So you have to understand it in context. Um, sometimes little d is the dimension of the space. Sometimes little d is the distance between points. But we'll normally stick to using the norm of the difference anyway. So the distance of x to y is uh, if x is equal to x1 up to xd as usual, then, uh, of course, x minus y is x1 minus y1 and so on up to xd minus yd. And uh, so the normal x minus y is equal to square root, and that's a non-negative square root, of course. In this module, we always use non-negative square root. of uh, what x1 minus y1 squared plus, and so on, plus what xd minus yd squared.
the sum of the squares, the difference in the coordinates. So again, that's by Pythagoras again. So that's the usual notion of the distance between the points, if you look at r squared or r cubed, and it generalizes to d-dimensional space. So this is the distance from x to y. So regard them as points, draw the line between them, and there's your norm of x minus y, which is, of course, equal to the norm of y minus x. And that's equal to the distance of x to y. The Euclidean distance. So you can use either one. You can use d for distance, or you can use just norm x minus y once you remember that that's what it is. It's the distance between them. Um, what, where have we got our result? Yes, yeah, so now what I'm going to prove for you is this triangle rule for distance, that the distance from x to y is no more than the distance from x to z plus the distance from z to y. So that's again a triangle rule. So let's uh, have these three points. So here's x, here's y, and here's some third point z. The diagram won't prove anything, but the diagram will show us what's going on. So there's the distance from x to y, here's the distance from x to z, and here's the distance from z to y. And I want to prove for you that the distance from x to y is no more than the sum of the distance from x to z plus the distance from z to y. And I'll use the triangle law for norm. So this is simply an exercise in writing down the definition of what d is and then uh, using it. Let's see if we can need that up here in a minute. Let's uh, make some more space there. Let's grab that. Right. Try again. So now we've got to prove it. Well, by definition, uh, distance from x to y is equal to the norm of x minus y. I'll do this one in a sort of backwards way. This is a standard trick, so it's worth knowing. We can rewrite x minus y as a sum of two other things that we want to compare. But if you want to know why we decided to do that, you could look at the proof backwards and see where it came from. So that's equal to... I rewrite x minus y as x minus z plus z minus y... And why did I do that? That's because these are two things I'm going to be wanting to compare with in a minute. So I haven't done anything yet. I just rewrote x minus y as a sum of two other things. But I have done something in as much as why did I decide to write it as those two things? That's because I knew what was coming next. And to realize what was coming next, really, you, look at, you actually would prove this proof in the other direction. So the, the, 
Proofs are often discovered backwards and then written forwards. Um, okay, now, that's a sum of two things, and the norm of a sum is letting to a sum of the norms. That's by the triangle inequality for norm. So that's smaller or equal to the norm of x minus z plus the norm of z minus y by the triangle inequality for norm. So notice what we're using. We're using the triangle inequality for norm to prove the triangle inequality for distance d. So it's a very slight improvement. But that's actually equal to distance from x to z plus distance from z to y by definition of d. And that finishes the proof. So, so now you've seen the proof finished again, you look at the end of the proof and you realise why, why I rewrote that bit at the beginning. So, so this line at the end explains the earlier line. We knew we were going to have to look at the norm of x minus z and the norm of z minus y. And that's why we rewrote the first one. Now, what I will do is, in some of the proofs in this module, I will give you some comments as to why the proof goes the way it does. Because this is not a module just about seeing lots of proofs and memorizing them. This is a module about learning also how to write proofs for yourself. So I will put in some extra comments. And some of you will be happier about proofs than others. And so some of you may feel that the extra comments are unnecessary. Or some of you may feel that some of the extra comments are unnecessary. It will vary from person to person. Uh, I got a lot of uh, comments last year on, on people saying that they were very grateful that I'd explain where bits of the proofs have come from. I won't have time in this module to do that in full for all the proofs, but there will be various places where I will explain what I was doing and why. So whenever you see this distance d, it's always, going to, it's always going to mean the same thing here. Uh, that's the only distance we're using in R to D. In other modules, you can use other notions of distance. And sometimes other notions of distance are more relevant. But this is the usual notion of distance in R to D. And so if we don't say otherwise, that's what we're using. It's the Euclidean distance. And that brings us to the end of chapter one. <coughs>